So there's something called the, the color wheel that we can talk about. And the idea with the color wheel is the following. If I have RGB, like in your computer monitor, and I add them all up, red plus green plus blue, I get white. Okay. Turn on all the pixels on your computer monitor, you get a white pixel because you're adding up the red, green, and blue. But these are not necessarily the only primary colors you can use. You can also use cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when I do that, I also get white. Now, for technical reasons, most computer monitors are RGB. Most printers are CMY or CMYK. The K means color temperature, which is how much black is in your uh, image. But let's see how these things overlap. So if I think about a region here of red, and I think about a region here of green, and a region here of blue, then in this overlap region between red and green, I get yellow. And between green and blue, I get cyan. And between blue and red, I get magenta. And if I add all those things together, then I get white. And so these are primary colors. If somebody says, what are the primary colors? A valid answer is red, green, and blue. But another answer is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And in fact, if you rotate around here, you can pick all sorts of different primary colors and still get them to add up to white. Now, if we think about red, green, and blue in terms of that spectrum, they don't really look like we just drew it. They're not blocks. They're actually sort of distributed regions. Okay, and so this first one is blue, and this one is green, and this one is red, and this is maybe 380 nanometers down here, and this is 700 up there. But there's some overlap in those regions, okay? There's some tails on either end, and so when you start mixing, you can take advantage of those overlaps. Now, there's two types of colors that you have to worry about. There's additive, and this is when you overlap bright pixels, like in your computer monitor, okay, and that's RGB. But subtractive is when you overlap inks. So if I take red paint and green paint and blue paint and I put them all on top of each other, I don't get white, I get black. Okay? Those are subtractive colors. And because the paint is red, that means it absorbs everything except red. Okay? My shirt is red because it's absorbing the other colors except red and those colors are bouncing off to you. But if I put blue paint on my shirt and green paint on my shirt, now it's absorbing not only the stuff blue and green from the original colors, it's absorbing the greens and the blues and the reds in all the other colors as well. It'll turn black, and that's subtractive. So these are inks. Additive colors are when you do bright beams, like the pixels on your computer monitor. Okay. Now it's kind of weird to think about because if you look at your computer monitor and it looks white to you, when you take a spectrum of it, if you take a monochromator and look at the spectrum, you will see this. Okay? You won't see a full color distribution. You'll see blues and greens and reds. And yet when I take sunlight and I take a spectrum of sunlight, it does fill in all those gaps. Okay? It has all the colors in the rainbow. Even though those two might look exactly the same to you, they can have very different spectral signatures. And this is something that's weird about your eyeball. 
in your eyeball, you have sensors that are red sensitive, green sensitive, blue sensitive, and somehow your brain interprets all that by putting them together and making white.